we're now going to talk about the slump test. The goal of the slump test is to rule up nerve root compression in the lumbar spine or adverse neurodynamics, especially for nerves in the hips and the lower extremities. Now I say rule up very loosely because if we look at the psychometrics up here, you'll see that they're pretty poor. Sensitivity is only 0.44 and the specificity is only 0.58. The specificity is technically better, uh, but it's still pretty bad. But even though it's better, that's why I say rule up here. But having a specificity of 0.58 basically means that if you have a positive slump test, there's a 58% chance that they have nerve root compression or adverse neurodynamics. It doesn't really tell us which one. So this test is okay, and it's often used in clinical practice, but really the better tests are the straight leg raise test with a sensitivity of 91% and the cross straight leg raise test of 90%. These two are better. And oftentimes the slump test is used when you just really need to confirm your hypothesis and you've already done the second and third tests right here that we'll cover later on. So the way the slump test is done is one at a time, you have the patient passively move through all these movements up here in the flow chart. And after every movement, you assess for their pain and signs and symptoms, okay? So before we get into this video right here, let's actually go through the flow chart and make sure we understand that. The first movement is really the only one that's not passive. This you can have the patient actively do, and they're going to assume a slump or a slouch position, basically an intentionally bad posture. You'll see that in a minute. This involves thoracic and lumbar flexion. And once they do this, you then assess for their signs and symptoms and pain. Then you're going to perform passive cervical flexion on them. You're going to bend their neck down, try to touch their chin to their sternum, and then you're going to assess the further signs and symptoms and pain. Then you'll perform passive ankle dorsiflexion, and again, assess for signs and symptoms and pain. And then you perform passive knee extension, and also not shown here, you assess for their signs and symptoms and pain. And what do we mean by signs and symptoms and pain? Well, by pain, we mean the burning, shooting pain going down that lower extremity. And by signs and symptoms, we mean numbness and tingling going down that lower extremity. So lower extremity paresthesias, numbness, tingling, burning, shooting pain. And if they experience any of those at any point in this pathway, that constitutes a positive slump test. Now let's take a look at a demonstration here of the slump test. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have the patient actively slump or slouch down intentionally and get that bad posture, which involves thoracic and lumbar flexion. All of these movements right here gradually put more and more tension on the nervous system. So tension on the nerve roots, both lumbar and sacral, tension on peripheral nerves going down the lower extremities. Okay, And once we get into this position, I'm going to assess for their symptoms and pain. Basically, any one of those three lower extremity paresthesias. Okay. If they don't have any of those symptoms yet, then I'm going to take their neck and passively move it into cervical flexion. Cervical flexion also puts tension on the nervous system. Once I move them into that position, I'm going to reassess for any of those lower extremity paresthesias. Assuming they don't have any at that point, I'm then going to passively dorsiflex their ankle. So I reach down and dorsiflex the ankle. Once again, I'm going to reassess for any of those three lower extremity paresthesias. Then I'm going to passively dorsiflex her ankle. You'll notice at this point that I'm doing everything on the left lower extremity. So am I expecting any paresthesias on the right side? No, I'm only expecting any if they're going to come on the left side, the side that I'm doing these passive movements on. Okay, So once I dorsiflex that left ankle, I'm going to reassess for any of those three lower extremity paresthesias on the left side, okay? Then I'm going to passively extend the knee, and at any point along that knee extension, I'm going to reassess for any of those three lower extremity paresthesias. Now, unless you just have really, really good nerves, this position right here is not comfortable for anybody. And the vast majority of people are going to feel some tension on their nervous system in this position. Does that constitute a positive test? No. In order to be a positive test, it has to reproduce any of those three paresthesias. 
numbness, tingling, or burning shooting pain. Now, each one of these successive movements right here puts more and more tension on the nervous system. That being said, it really doesn't matter in theory what order you do them in. In practice, the slump and cervical flexion are always done in this order. However, the order of these last two movements really just depends on clinician preference. My personal preference is to do dorsiflexion first followed by knee extension, but some clinicians will do the knee extension first followed by dorsiflexion. Regardless of what order you do them in, we're all still going to the same final position. So if a patient is going to have a positive test, it doesn't matter which order you do these in. So you do you, you do whichever you prefer. Dorsiflexion, knee extension, the order does not matter. But in the end, a positive test is still the same. Reproduction of any of those three lower extremity paresthesias.